In this video, I'll go over how I turned my Synology NAS into a PFSense firewall and router using Virtual Machine Manager. The idea came to me after I came across this forum post where the author shared a PDF on how they were able to configure PFSense on their Synology NAS. I'd encourage you to have a look at the thread and download the PDF, which I'll link to in the description below. Much of the setup that I cover takes from what was described in the PDF and adapted to my setup, where I'll be using a DS220 Plus with a memory upgrade to be able to run Virtual Machine Manager. If you're new to PFSense, like I mentioned earlier, it is a popular, free, and open source firewall and router software that is based on FreeBSD and can be managed completely from its web interface. It is extremely powerful and flexible and allows for additional features and expandability. For more information about PFSense, check out their website, which I'll also link to in the description below. Let's get started by first downloading the PFSense ISO from the PFSense website. Here I'm already on the download page, and I'll select AMD 64, 64-bit as the architecture. For the installer, I'll choose the DVD image ISO installer. Then leaving the mirror as is, I'll click download and select allow from this pop-up window to download the ISO to my computer. Once the ISO has finished downloading, I'll navigate to DSM and upload the ISO to a shared folder that I've already created. I'll also go to the package center and install Virtual Machine Manager. Next, I'd like to review my current network setup so I'll go to Control Panel, Network, then select Network Interface. At this point, the NAS is connected to my local LAN and is currently obtaining a DHCP IP address on LAN 1. Eventually, LAN 1 will be the WAN port in PFSense. I also have LAN 2 currently disconnected, but when I'm done with the setup, I'll plug this port into a switch that will be used for the LAN network in PFSense. Now I'm ready to start configuring the PFSense VM. I'll launch Virtual Machine Manager and run through the initial setup, ensuring that the host NAS supports running virtual machines and configure on what volume virtual machines will be stored. After that, I'll select Network to configure virtual switches. I'll delete the default VM network that was created by default, then add a WAN virtual switch using LAN 1 and a LAN virtual switch using LAN2. Now I'll start configuring the PFSense VM by selecting Virtual Machine. I'll create a new virtual machine, selecting Others as the operating system. Select Next from this Select Storage window. Enter in a name and allocate memory. Allocate 32 gigabytes for the virtual disk. Configure the WAN and LAN virtual switches. Mount the PFSense ISO file for boot up. Then enable the option to power on the virtual machine after creation and click done. After the VM starts up, I'll connect to the console view to install PFSense. Then I'll run through the setup selecting the default options. After the installation is complete, I'll reboot the VM. I'll also return to Virtual Machine Manager and unmount the ISO file used for boot up and installation. Next, while we wait for PFSense to finish booting, if you like the video up to this point, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as well. Now, when PFSense is done booting, we can see that both the WAN and LAN interfaces have IP addresses assigned. I could leave things as is, but because the 192.168.1 LAN network is so widely used, I'd like to change it to something else. So I'll enter option two to set the interface IP address. Enter two once again, to edit the LAN interface. Type N for no because I don't want to configure the interface via DHCP. 
enter in the new IP address I would like to use and enter 24 for the subnet. I'll type N again because I don't want to set up an IPv6 address for the LAN interface. I do want to enable the DHCP server on the LAN, so I'll type Y for yes and give it a start and end address for the IPv4 client address range. I'll type N here because I don't want to revert to HTTP as the web configurator protocol. Now I'll wait for the changes to the LAN to be saved and hit enter to return to the main console window where we can see that the IP address and network for the LAN was reconfigured successfully. At this point, I'll switch back to DSM and check the network interface listing from the network control panel. I'll also plug in an ethernet cable into LAN 2 and plug the other end into a port on a network switch that I've set aside for this project. This activates LAN 2 on the NAS and we can see that its status has changed to connected and it also received a DHCP IP address from PFSense. On my MacBook, connected to the same network switch via an ethernet dongle, I can confirm receiving an IP address through DHCP from PFSense as well. Now I'll turn off Wi-Fi and use the ethernet connection to continue configuring PFSense. I'll then bring up another browser tab, enter in the LAN IP address of the PFSense VM, bypass the certificate warning, and log in to the PFSense web UI as admin with the default password of PFSense, all in lowercase. This starts an initial setup wizard where I'll click next through the first few steps. From this general information window, I'll enter in a primary DNS server and I'll use Cloudflare's public DNS server for this setup. I'll change the time zone to the one that I'm in. Change the admin password from this set admin web GUI password window. Then reload the configuration, bringing up this wizard completed window where I'll click finish to be redirected to the PFSense dashboard. Now I'll finish configuring the WAN portion of the setup by first selecting status, then DHCP leases to find the LAN IP address of my Synology NAS. Then I'll bring up the tab where I had DSM running and enter in the IP address that was just identified to connect to DSM from within the LAN. I'll log in again, then bring up the network interface once again from the network control panel. Now, what I'll do is assign a static IP address to the LAN 1 interface so it doesn't get a DHCP IP address when I plug in the ISP modem into the port. This will prevent DSM from directly connecting to the internet, but will allow the PFSense WAN interface to get a public IP address from the ISP modem so that it has direct access to the internet. The IP address that is assigned to LAN 1 can be anything, but for the subnet mask, I'll limit it to a slash 30 subnet so that only two IP addresses are assignable. When done, I'll click OK, and now the DSM portion of the setup is completed. Now I'll plug the ethernet cable from the ISP modem into the LAN 1 port of the NAS, which is the WAN port in PFSense. Then switch over to the PFSense web UI, and if we look at the WAN interface, it is still displaying the IP address that it had earlier. To have it pick up a new IP address, I'll force PFSense to renew its DHCP lease by bringing up the WAN interface, then disabling and re-enabling the interface. Now, when I bring up the PFSense dashboard, we can see that it has a new public IP address that it got directly from my ISP. At this point, the PFSense firewall is working, and the last thing I'd like to do is assign a DNS server to the DHCP server set up for the LAN. This is done via the Services menu and the DHCP server settings. I'll scroll down to the Server Options section and enter in Cloudflare's public DNS server once again. Now I'll click Save 
and apply the changes to finish up the setup. Hopefully your PFSense install worked out and leave a comment down below to let me know how things went. Also, if you'd like more PFSense content, let me know in the comments as well. Lastly, if you'd like to support my work or hire me for a project, check out the links either here on screen or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.